Hi everyone. Uh, today's topic is the role of moisture retaining agents in seafood industry, especially in shrimp processing industry. In this video, we will cover th three components. The one is what are the moisture retaining agents which are widely used in shrimp processing industry, seafood industry, and what are the key factors, parameters to be monitored while preparing the solution or during processing or after soak out. What are the key parameters, key factors to be monitored to get the optimum yield of the soak out gain. And the third one is what are the requirements of the, of the developed countries means what should be the sodium level and what should be the moisture level and what are the requirements for the pre dusted or breaded products. The moisture content also plays the vital role to absorb or to get the coating of the dusted products. Let us start the video. Hi friends, this is Manmad Krishna. You are watching Manmad Krishna Food Tech channel. Now today's topic is moisture retaining agents in shrimp processing industries. What are those? Let us have a discussion. So there are E numbers and INS numbers. So E numbers means what? European economic community have developed a number of additives. Each and every food additive they have allocated particular number which starts from 0, 1 to 1000. So like that this is only meant for used in European countries. The E numbers. E numbers. Then now next, next is INS number. International numbering system which has been developed by Codex Elementarius Commission which is broadly accepted worldwide. Worldwide all food ingredients, all food labelings must mention the INS number. Both are same but E numbers represents E 330, 331, 332 like that. INS number only the number will represent. Which, 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 which comprises the particular food additives which are listed in that. Now, in shrimp processing industry, the E numbers like there are two categories in shrimp or seafood processing industries. One is pass fit treatment and another one is non pass fit treatment. So, let us have a discussion. What are the uh, chemicals which are used as a non pass fit? Means chemical uh, pass fit free uh, additives. These are all phosphate free additives. For example, E300. E300 is nothing but ascorbic acid, which is the vitamin C. This is ascorbic acid, which is used as an antioxidant and food additive to treat the shrimps. And E330. E330 is the citric acid. Citric acid also, which is act as a moisture retaining agent and antioxidant. The 331 is sodium citrate and potassium citrate. So these are all the non phosphate group which is extensively used in shrimp processing industries. And what about the phosphate groups? Phosphate groups are E450, E451 and E452. E450 means a sodium diphosphates or potassium diphosphates. So E4 and E451 is sodium triphosphates. Sodium triphosphates are pentasodium triphosphates and E452 is sodium tripolyphosphate. So sodium tripolyphosphate is extensively used in uh, shrimp processing industry to treat the shrimps for many benefits. These are the chemicals which are ap approved by FDA and EFSA. So EFSA means European Food Safety Authority and FDA Food and Drug Administration. These chemicals are categorized under GRAS. So GRAS category means generally recognized as safe to use in food processing industries to use it as a food additive GRAS FDA categorized in that and EFS also approved these chemicals. Now the next step is what are the key factors the parameters to be monitored carefully during the process of soaking a treatment or before treatment 
after so out to get the more yieldings of the streams let us observe what are the key factors which influence the water gain or flavor retention and taste and texture improvements the chemical concentration so the chemicals are either phosphates or non phosphates in the combination of salts because if if we add with the combination of uh, phosphate or non phosphate if salt is added it will gives a synergistic effect means the it will it will increase the texture it will increase the appearance and brightness and it will increase the flavor retaining compounds so that's why along with phosphate or non phosphate salt also to be added during the treatment of shrimps in seafood industry so what are the chemicals what is the treatment process let us have a look so for example for 100 kg of shrimps the solution ratio might be like this for 100 kg of shrimps if the headless headless shrimps means only beheaded shrimps then for 100 kg we have to prepare 110 liters of the solution whereas for eg peel headless eg peel for 100 kg shrimps we have to prepare 120 liters of the solution and what about pd and pdto for 100 kg of pd shrimps or pdto shrimps we have to prepare the solution of about minimum 125 liters to 130 liters or 140 liters also we have to prepare why because during agitation mechanical agitators or manual agitation whatever it may be during agitation if we if we could not prepare the solution more compared with the material then the pieces also the shrimps also will move in a difficult i mean the agitator also will nullify agitator also damage the texture and broken pieces also will occur more so that's why the ratio also always to be maintained depends upon the weight gain mostly the pd or pdto uh, chemicals like phosphates or non phosphates so to get the optimum results what is the process of preparation of the solution and yeah let us have a discussion first of all the key factors to be monitored before preparing the treatment solution so once we take the weighment of the shrimps about 100 kg in evaluated shrimps eg peel or pdto what we have to do is first we have to fill the tub with 20 liters or 50 liters of the water first we have to fill the tub with 50 liters of water then put one shovel of ice then the temperature will drop down to 15 degree centigrade then add the phosphates first some of the people who are unknowingly adding the salt first but we should not add the salt first first we have to dissolve the phosphate in the water if the water temperature is 15 degree centigrade then phosphates will dissolve the optimum temperature is 15 degree centigrade about 15 degree centigrade the once the phosphate completely dissolved then put some 20 or 50 liters of water or some put some ice then again add the salt so then once the salt also completely added then fulfill the required amount of water and ice you the operator should choose the ratio of water and ice so water and ice our intention is the soaked solution if you prepare the solution after adding the chemicals water and ice if you prepare the 125 liters of the solution it should have the temperature of 2 to 4 degree centigrade is advisable why because before soaking the solution temperature should be 2 to 4 degree centigrade then the gain also will it will absorb the more it will retain the more water based on that we have to adjust the water and ice ratios 50% water or 50% 50% water or 50% ice or 60% ice 40% water our final final goal is to achieve the solution temperature 2 to 4 degree centigrade so once the solution has been prepared and before the preparing the solution we have to make sure the water hardness also if the hard water the solution could not dissolve properly the water hardness should be 150 so if the water hardness should be the 150 or 100 to 200 in between or 75 to 150 in between 
that is the optimum temp optimum to gain because the water contains trace minerals zinc might be there cobalt might be there nickel might be there manganese potassium magnesium lot of trace minerals might be there if if you you if you treat the water completely if you if you uh, provide the water more softened water then that is not good only for boiling purpose or for boiler you can produce the water with the hardness of 10 uh, hardness whereas for soaking we have to maintain from 100 or about something like 150 a ppm hardness is required for optimum gain and the temperature also 2 to 4 degrees is advisable the same process when you if you are adding non phosphates like citric acid or ascorbic acid the same first we have to add the citric acid or ascorbic acid then stirring then add some water and ice then finally add the salt because it won't dissolve if you add the salt if if the water contains more salts then it won't dissolve because the hardness also will increase thank you friends for watching this video if you like this video please uh, click the bell icon and subscribe my channel for regular updates thank you